This week, we talk about the carnivore diet. Also, Bill Gates says we should all eat synthetic meat. <laughs> I wonder what we think about that. And we're going to check in to see if I'm any less fat. Let's get into it. What's up, Dewey? Nothing. I was just thinking about that intro and a lot of the podcasts I've been listening to lately. They're, I think they're shortening them. I think yeah. that whole long intro with the music just blah, 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 on and on and on. Have you and noticed? Well, I think it's because of our short attention spans in America. I don't have, have a short attention span. <laughs> well, you mean Americans in general? Well, everywhere, yeah. right? But yeah. If you remember back in the 80s about? when when sitcom theme songs were like two and a half minutes? Oh, yeah. Just but they're when good. you got each other. Right. They're growing know. pains. And yeah. They were good, though. It was a whole song. Right. Now, if you watch a sitcom, which I haven't in forever, but it's like literally just da na da na and then they start. That's Last Man Standing. Yeah. It's, it's just no, like it's a little nothing. jingle and the little right. hunting boots drop, and it's right to the show. Yeah, people are just don't have time for that shiz, I guess. They just want to get right into it. <laughs> right. Um, which I'm with them. So remember I asked you last week what your favorite low-carb meal was? Oh, you you got your favorite this? keto meal. Or keto, whatever. Yeah. Keto, low-carb, I think carnivore. my favorite low-carb meal. What'd you have this week? What'd you love this week? The same shit I talked about last week. I had a burger patty right. with some mayo and some pickles and an avocado and I don't know, anything else that didn't have a shit ton of carbs in it. You know what I ordered that I saw? It's the, the, the danger of being on these diets and like being so focused is you see that you're very susceptible to these product mentions. And once you start searching for this shit, it shows up in your Facebook feed. Oh. And then I'm an impulse buyer. So I ordered some, I think it was Muldoon's sea, flaked sea salt from the bottom of the Mediterranean or something. <laughs> but that shit was awesome, man. It's this big flaky salt. So it's like the chunks are big, it's big flakes. You put that on and mix it. I, I, picture, did what you did. I picture some guy in Hendrum using like iodine, <laughs> ionized salt, just putting it in something and to make it flaky. And oh, I man. Here Galonks come Josh. <laughs> I mean, and it, you know, Mediterranean. I can't imagine the markup on this shit because, oh. you know, the price per pound or per ounce was insane. Yeah. But then after I talked myself out of that, then I did some research on the keto carnivore sites and everybody's talking about Redmond Real Salt. So I ordered a five gallon pail of that. For your sidewalk? <laughs> For what? What are you going to do with five gallons? I don't know. It was, like I said, in Besides buying. never buy salt again. <laughs> right. It was on Amazon and, I bought a little container, so I just scoop that up. But that's what's on the counter, and then that's my salt. Because that's you, what Sean Baker. You have to put it in a mill. Use. No, no. It's just it's already it's ready, fine enough. ready to go. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, anyways, little impulse buying um, spree there. Uh, last night I had a, a nice ribeye at Speakeasy. They ran in a. Was it really good? We went in a special. It was pretty good. Kind of thin, but <sighs> see, yeah, that was the only the only downside. Well, oh, but I tried your little tactic. Little interesting story here. I said, "Hey, uh, could you fry this in butter? You know, not oil." And she looked at me like she hated me. The waitress just said, mm. "I said, could you fry this in butter?" And she literally said, "No." I'm like, well, first of all, you suck at customer service. I would have went, "Whoa, whoa, 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 whoa!" Because at Why? least at least say. I'll check. Right. Or, yeah, why not? It's a steak. I mean, you throw it on a grill. Like you said, slap down some butter first. Yeah. That's they it. have the little, if you've, like I mentioned last week, if you've ever worked in a kitchen, they have that little tin yeah. thing of full of melted butter already. Right. Exactly. Brush it on. Plus, you know, you have butter in the restaurant and you know you have a steak in the restaurant. That's all I need. I, w I wasn't asking her to take the Parmesan out of the lasagna. Yeah. <laughs> You know what I mean? Right. Can you take the red sauce out of the lasagna? Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't a weird request, but she just literally said, "No." I said, "Well, just fry it in butter and oil if you can." And she was so annoyed. Why? I don't know, but it was a interesting lesson in customer service there. Um, I might not go to Speakeasy now. <laughs> For real, we've we've always had good. I think it was maybe she was having an off night. They Norm do have really good lasagna. Yeah, that, that's one reason to stay out of there for me. Right. That shit's dangerous. It is. Um, so I wanted to bring up this uh, couple things here I saw online this week. Tomahawk. Really? That's, by the way. Tomahawk. The cowboy yes. cut. That's my favorite. We were talking a couple weeks back about the anti-meat movement. And I saw this post from Sean Baker 
there's a carnivore. Um, and that'll tie into our topic this week of the carnivore diet. Who Sean <clears throat> Baker, it's it's worth noting, is a doctor. Yeah. And Olympic or not Olympic, but world record holder in rowing. Oh. Yeah. Oh, in, yeah. In his did, age yeah. class. He's I like did. 55 or something, and he just destroys this rowing machine. Of If you watch, go on YouTube and watch some of his stuff, he's just wrecking that thing. I'm in the top 1% in my age bracket for rowing, too. In town? No, in the world. <laughs> Like top one percent, <laughs> I believe you. Doesn't mean anything, right? <laughs> it's because ninety some percent of people can't do it at all. Because there's so many people that have done it that the top one percent is still thousands. Oh, okay, I gotcha. <laughs> but I can row. You can row. Oh yeah. All right, so let's. They were talking about anti meat, and uh, one thing he's pointing out is there's this recommendation. Now this is a published thing in some study or some recommendation, and it says they're talking about how to convince people to eat less meat. And the whole problem is they're treating it like it's tobacco or, you know, it's like a dangerous substance. So I'll just read this for the audio listeners, the highlighted portion. However, the scale of change to the food system is unlikely to be successful if left to the individual or the whim of consumer choice. This change requires reframing at the population and systemic level. By contrast, hard policy interventions include laws, fiscal measures, subsidies and penalties, trade reconfiguration, and other economic and structural measures. So that's their way of basically saying people left to their own devices will not give up meat. We need to implement uh, laws and penalties uh, for eating meat, which will disincentivize people from eating it. And that's scary shit right there. Because us as libertarian-minded people, leave us alone, we'll leave you alone. But when governments start talking like this, that's not cool. Yeah. Beware of, the, beware of the government that shows up and says it's going to protect you. <laughs> from Yeah, from your own choices, by yeah. the way. Yeah. It, first and foremost, this is fear-mongering. Nobody's taking away beef. Nobody's taking away meat. But they're trying. And, but they they won't succeed. They just but, won't. Um, but what I thought, exactly what you thought, the subsidies and penalties and the trade reconfiguration. And I'm torn on that because I think that right there in terms of protecting people from meat is complete bullshit. Right. It's, meat is food. Mm -hmm. However. The, the <laughs> optimal human food. Right. However. Um, my libertarian bent often is easily swayed to the dark side <laughs> when it's New York and it's big gulps. Right. Because I'm like, well, whoa, whoa, no, no, no. Leave my steak alone, but regulate the shit out of that because well, it's poison. <laughs> it is, but I think if people want to drink a 64-ounce big gulp, they need to wheel around on a hand cart. That's their choice, Right. Just don't ask me to pay for it. No, we will, though, right. in no, terms that, of that, and healthcare yeah. premiums. That's where li the libertarian stuff gets difficult because yep. if you're saying, okay, you kill yourself, do whatever you want, but don't ask me to pay for it, but then ultimately you end, you end up doing it. Uh, well, let's stay in the meat thing here. So here's another article. Squirrel. Yes, exactly. <laughs> here's another, yes, except your cookies, men's health. So everyone uh, may have seen this article about Bill Gates um, talking about how rich countries should eat 100% synthetic beef. Now, this is just – now, here's a guy that actually has the riches and power to make this – make a huge effort to make this actually happen. Now, a couple things about this. He's like a scary movie. Like yeah, the, he's like, the, he's like they're the, calling him Dr. Evil now. The supercomputer that just gets smarter and smarter and smarter and smarter, and it just becomes completely evil. What? Yeah, what's scary about this is – Another article I saw is he just became the largest landowner in America. I saw that this it's week. Like Two hundred fifty million acres. Holy fuck, that's scary too. Because what is he going to do with that land? You think he's going to put cows on it? He's going to make sure cows don't go on it. Exactly. He's going to because what do you think this synthetic meat is made of? It's all some plant based, as Sean Baker calls it, soy. pet food. Yeah, yeah it's soy. It's, it's human pet food. So he's going to just increase monocropping. And generate this synthetic junk that you put into this fake meat, and that's what he thinks we should be eating now. But it's okay. a way to stop the climate crisis. Okay, that's what I was just gonna say. Look, cut the shit. That's what's, his, what's what's the end game here? It's not even. He's is not it, even so, lying, so he's not even trying to hide that to avoid 
climate disaster because of cow farts? Mm -hmm. No, seriously. Is that it? That's it. Because, and even in this article, it says, um, as we all know, you know, monitor, uh, it's, oh, okay, I'll just quote it. It's no secret, this is from the article, it's no secret that the latter, and he's talking about agriculture, is a gargantuan contributor to greenhouse gas emissions with burping, farting cows, making up nearly a third of all emissions from livestock production. So clearly something needs to be done. So, I mean, he's just talking about it like it's fact. And his solution is, you know, have by have the most land ownership in America, Joe, grow giant monocrops on that land, Use that to produce synthetic meat. So if people want meat, you know, they'll just have to deal with this. And he, and this is where it gets creepy, man. He says, I think all rich countries should move to 100% synthetic beef. You can get used to the taste difference. And the claim is they're going to make it taste even better over time. Eventually, that green premium is modest enough that you can sort of change the behavior of people or use regulation to totally shift the demand. The that, demand... That, the demand because you can afford it. Yeah, but that that sentence right, that last phrase, use regulation to totally shift the demand. That's code for we're going to make this almost impossible to buy. Yeah. Beef will be $400 a pound. Yeah. I mean, holy shit, man. That is some scary shit. And it's all about this climate stuff. You know, it's all focused on that. Blaming, uh, far, you know, ranching for the farm or for climate change, basically. Um, so that's that's some scary shit right there. And, you know, there's just another advocate for making meat a poisonous substance or framing it that way. And the thing is, they just declare, well, obviously meat's bad for you. We all know that. So, I mean, that's, where they're, that's their baseline assumption. They start there. And then they say, so how do we get people to eat less? And then they start working on these laws, regulations, market pressures, all this yeah, stuff. Manipulate it. They try to manipulate it. And to Bill Gates, I say, no thanks, man. No thanks. Stay out of my diet. Yeah, I don't. I just. Sorry, this is too political for me. <laughs> I, I just don't see it. I don't see any of this shit happening. So, but what do you think about him buying? I mean, this is he is happening. He's buying up the land. He's a lot now. He's the largest landowner. What do you think he's going to do with that? Politics aside, just well, he's going to make it so it's not ranchable or farmable. Yeah, exactly. Well, we already have enough, and he's going to feed you human pet food. He's not buying up current ranches. Well, you don't think he will? I don't know. I mean, he's got more money than God. If he, if he makes, you know, goes to a retired rancher and says, hey, I'll pay you double the price per acre of what anyone else will, why couldn't he buy up ranches? It's uh, scary. I guess we'll have to see. I it don't it, like it. It is. Yeah, I don't like it either. Um, let's talk about happy stuff. <laughs> right. Well, I'm just, I, I just wanted I to frame. I don't want to think that it's possible. The reason I wanted to talk about this because, well, first of all, it's huge news. Single biggest landowner in America. Um, is this guy that wants to do this anti-meat agenda. Well, not only is it huge news, but half of the story is based on bullshit. Exactly. It's not true. Right. It's, they, it's, it's they start still, with a baseline assumption that, well, obviously meat's horrible for the environment and your body, so we need to fix it. it they act like they're this is Philip Morris. <laughs> right. And like he's buying land so that people can't grow tobacco for cigarettes or something. That's They're making that exact same parallel. Oh, for sure. And that's that's some scary shit. But the reason I wanted to bring it up is because, you know, we're going to talk about the carnivore diet in this episode. That's the whole topic. And there is a movement afoot to try to dissuade people from thinking that's not only a good option, that it's actually like poisonous. So, you know, we need to be a voice out there contradicting that, countering that. Um, so, yeah, enough about Dr. Evil. <laughs> He uh, just stick to building computers, dude. That's what I say. Um, so let's get into uh, the carnivore diet. So I want to talk about how I first heard about this, and you can tell me where, where it first came on your radar. I think this is true for a lot of people. I heard Sean Baker on Joe Rogan. And this is, I don't know, maybe three years ago. And I was kind of transfixed. I'm like, holy shit. Because he was just talking about, you know, and even and Rogan was like, you just eat meat. I mean, it was just everybody was like WTF, you know, like, and that's not all Rogan eats, right? Well, he was just interviewing 
Well, yeah, he's, he no, did it. He's, 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 no, he's, he's, he's done it for months at a time. He's full time now. Is he now? Yep. Okay. That's all he is. Well, and I know he did Carnivore January or whatever they call it. Right. World Carnivore Month. But, right. Um, but I was listening to this and I was just transfixed because, you know, all my programming, I was raised, well, vegetables are good for you. Meat is an indulgence that uh, should be used sparingly because of its it's bad for you. It's going to clog your arteries, all the things we've talked about in the past. Fat was demonized. So a lean thing of chicken was okay, but a big fatty steak, ooh, evil, artery clogging, no good. And he was basically saying the exact opposite of that because you know what he eats every day? He's like three ribeyes. Right. <laughs> three ribeyes once a day, and I've been watching his YouTube videos. So definitely check out Sean Baker on YouTube, but he posts just about every day, and he demonstrates his workouts. He shows what he – eats and he usually eats one meal a day and it's usually like four pounds of ribeye. <laughs> right. But he's massive. He's like six five and just Yeah, two fifty and four percent body fat. Yeah, he's huge. Um <clears throat> so that really like got my gears going like because I never liked vegetables anyways. So it was fairly easy for me to just ditch them. Um I was whenever I was kind of doing keto, which I still li- like and have done plenty of times, a steak and asparagus, that was good. That was fine. I got no problem yeah. with that. Um, and I had no issues with it digestive wise or, you know, toxin wise or any of that. Um, and one thing I think you'll see, so that was my introduction, but one thing I think you'll notice in the carnivore community, and there's a lot of carnivore versus vegan because they're kind of both extremes, right? Way, way extreme. And keto's yep. sort of in the middle, but closer to carnivore because obviously it's meat heavy, very and animal products heavy. Um, but there's a big it's two sides of the same coin. And a lot of times people get super dogmatic, super religious about this shit. And I think you'll find amongst the carnivore community, there's less of that because what we say, and not we, not like I'm one of them, but what they typically would say is try it for yourself. They're not saying you have to do this because of the try animals it. and yeah. the environment. And yeah, you know, there's not, no virtual signaling. Yeah. It's not because of, some dogmatic reason it's it's hey i think this is the best thing for your health you should try and see what happens it worked for me yeah and another one speaking of rogan um so i heard jordan and michaela peterson and michaela peterson's episode was particularly interesting because she had huge autoimmune she problems she corrected so many things yeah. and it's almost when you start when i was listening to the but when michaela peterson was on with rogan i started listening to it and i'm just like I think she's full of shit. Yeah, it's, it sounds like <laughs> bullshit. Yeah, it's almost unbelievable. Like, right? It's like know. she was on her deathbed. Yeah, she and had joints she's replaced. Running marathons and she had joints replaced by the time she was like twenty. Yeah, not younger. Yeah, younger. Sure, so she had surgeries when she yeah. was in her teens. Yeah, huge autoimmune problems, and you know that's the one thing that I'll say is everybody's not made equal. She's obviously hyper hypersensitive to. Anything. And and so she tried it. She eventually just was forced to eliminate everything out of her diet. And the only thing that she didn't have insane uh, episodes where she was like bedridden was when she just ate meat and water and salt. She can't even like when she goes to a steakhouse and they put the wrong spices on, she'll have an outbreak. Yeah. She's that sensitive. So for her, it was real easy to tell what's going to work. And now obviously everyone's not that sensitive. I'm not. You know, <clears throat> I'm just certain I'm, I'm, I'm carb sensitive, but I'm carb sensitive. But yeah. you know, if you put rosemary on my steak, I'm not going to like be in bed for two weeks. Right. You know, with a arthritis outbreak or whatever. For me, back to your original question. Yeah. What'd you hear about Dr. It? Paul? Dr. Paul, Paul Saladino. Paul Saladino. Yep. yep. He was on, you know, honestly, I don't even remember what he, who he was on with. Obviously it was he was on Rogan recently, but. And speaking of that, I got his book here, The Carnivore Code. Yep. So I, I hi- heavily highlighted this, you know, over the, over the over the last couple of weeks, kind of doing some research. And uh, this guy is super, super freaking smart. You know, you're you're listening to him, and after you read a paragraph, you're like, "Whoops, hang on." You're like this. Can you repeat the part of the stuff where you said all about the things? Yeah, <laughs> you're like. <laughs> Wanted that sound like, so bad. Can you repeat that and dumb it down? <laughs> yes. Um, <clears throat> so here's Sean Baker's book called The Carnivore Diet. This is a lot simpler. Um, you know, and this is a good reference, you know. 
you can just like if somebody brings up something about it, you can just kind of you know look up the subject matter and find the thing and find a nice little paragraph on it. And it's a, a very good reference. And, and this one, I heavily, heavily highlighted the crap out of this thing too. Um, you know, it co covers everything, all the good points, the the pros, the cons, uh, the arguments for and against. So, uh, two great books on on the subject there. But yeah, so not so back to the Michaela and yeah. and the okay. and the dogma dogmaticness for her. She has to be dogmatic. She has to be like I. I have to, but not for other people. It's her story. It's her story. Yeah. yeah. So she gets to be. Exactly. You're not dogmatic if it's your story. Right. And yeah, I'm using the term wrong, but. No, you weren't. You she, weren't because she would have, she would appear like a zealot mm -hmm. on a podcast or when she's sharing her opinion, but that doesn't necessarily mean that she, it's not her story. Right. If it works for her, then like I said, if you got rainbows shooting out of your ass and <laughs> your blood works perfection, rock on. Right. And she's lived this way for years now, three, four years. And that's when she is at her optimal health. Um, All right. I'm, I don't want to, and I don't know when the right time to, yeah, go ahead. to say this is, but, and I don't want to bury the lead or <laughs> I don't want to talk over your touchdown no, go call. <laughs> go ahead. But um, I have a theory. And it's it, it it's a common theory, mm -hmm. and it, more people share it than I thought. I thought it was mine. I thought I was being original. This is I'm going to do this right now, <laughs> okay. and and I, I just remembered it, and I, I wanted to do it just Second. in memory yep. of Rush. Oh yes, yes. R.I.P. Rush. He always Very used good. to do that with his papers. I know. I want a gold microphone now. <laughs> the EIB. Stupid silver ones are no good. So I'll try and dumb it down for the people in Rio Linda. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, but no. The theory is vegans are carnivores. Mm -hmm. It's two extreme ends of the spectrum. And they all experience phenomenal health turnaround. Right. It's I used to have diabetes and I stopped eating meat. Now I don't have it anymore. I used to stop I stopped eating carbs. I don't have it anymore. I think my theory is that there's a common denominator among all those people. I know what it is. And they stopped eating the standard yes, American diet. Exactly. They stopped eating all the bullshit, all the fast food, the garbage that's not really food. Yep. And they just started eating real food. Right. And that's I just, it. I think, I think that's it. Yes, that is true. And that's why they experience a honeymoon phase. Right. Right. And that's why vegans, uh, when you see, you know, their initial, they're all like, well, oh my God, I'm losing weight. Like you said, I'm losing weight. I'm experiencing all these benefits because they came off the standard American diet typically. So they cut out a lot of processed junk. and So perfect segue. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Almost I just put it right on the tee there for you. <laughs> so here's the problem that I have with both teams is after that honeymoon phase, because that's what it's really called. Yep. After that honeymoon phase, you start to experience the effects of certain deficiencies. Mm -hmm. namely protein with vegan, namely healthy gut microbiome and B12 with, or not B12, uh, just vitamin B right. with carnivore. Now, one thing that's interesting about that is if you look for like vegan deterioration and you look at any long-term vegans, most of them, you can tell they are very – in order to build any, not lose muscle mass and even build muscle mass, it's an extremely, you got to really thread the needle, right? Right. I mean, you got to work overtime. And if you think you're doing it for ethical reasons, you might be willing to do that. But obviously, you can be vegan and still eat pizza and, you know, you can still eat crap. Well, that's the right? that's the, the garbage vegan. Yeah. You that can, eats Doritos and Oreos. Yeah, and you can be that. And, um, but they're not technically vegan if they look at some of the ingredients. But, you know, you just look at... You look at the proponents of the various diets, and I think you'll see see a little bit of a contrast. Look There's, at Paul Saladino and and you know Sean Baker, and then look at Dr. Greger or these yeah. vegan, these vegan doctors. Yep, most the, of them are either skinny fat or just real thin, and none of them are none of them are bulky. No, oh. you know, muscly wise. Yep, none of them, and because it's almost impossible to take in the kind of nutrients that they're going to build muscle. 
And that's one of the things that Carnivore does. So let's talk about. So for fun, I take that and I take Mm -hmm. those. Yeah, I go into like, I go on to like Instagram posts of vegans, and I'll comment. <laughs> I, I I would be interested in the vegan diet, but I like muscle, right? And they say you can have muscle. And I'm like, I I don't I don't buy it. Not I think salads. I need meat. Not on salads. I think alone. I need meat. I think I need meat to build muscle. I think I need plenty of protein. You can get plenty of protein from fuel sources, or from other plant based sources. Yeah, where does that come in a big? One of those big jugs that you unscrew, right? Yeah, and it's called whey. Yeah, that's not vegan. But here's the here's the fun here's the fun part. When I make these stupid comments and underneath this a vegan post, every single time they say, "Oh yeah, well check out these accounts," and it's the same fucking seven guys. Right. <laughs> right. So well, the, great. Out of billions of people, yeah. there's seven. Yeah. Well, thanks for showing me all the outliers. Exactly, and. Right, and you, you look at guys that are trying to achieve top performance, you know, like look at Cam Newton. You know, he was vegan and he was disgusting think, this year. Yeah, I don't think he's even did he even play. He's those. always hurt. Yeah, exactly. But you know, that's an anecdote also. So again, but I, I'm not here to declare Tom Brady's quasi vegan too. Well, no, or he's no, anti-inflammatory. No. In fact, you know what? It's funny that you bring Tom Brady up because Super Bowl was just last week. He, I, I saw his TB12 diet. Okay? Yeah, yeah. And it, it talks about what he eats. 80% is, you know, some type of vegetables. 20% is lean proteins, okay? Yeah. You know what the average American diet, or average American diet is? 10% protein. Right. They're, so they're he's s- eating double the amount of protein that your average American gets. Right. There you go. Yeah. And, and the rest is, is clean vegetables, whole food vegetables. Anti-inflammatory. Exactly. Yep. And he stays away from all nightshades because they're – Inflammatory stuff. Yep. Drinks water, a ton of water. And Same diet that Tiger Woods is on. Tons of sleep. Yep. So he's eating double the protein of your average American. So remember that when you claim that he's vegan. Right. Um, he's just eating very clean and double the amount of protein that your average American gets. So let's talk about some of the uh, benefits. Okay. And these are the things I noticed. And again, I encourage you to try this for yourself. Try that, you know, when they did the World Carnivore Month in January, just try it for a couple of weeks, see what happens. Um, brain fog lifts. And a lot of these are, you know, similar to keto benefits too. Mm-hmm. Brain fog lifts. For all the same reasons. Have all the same reasons. Yep. You're in ketosis and your body's operating on ketones. Um, inflammation reduction. Okay. I got to tell you a story about me. When I was a kid, I was super allergic. I would sniffle all the time, watery eyes constantly sneezing like a mofo all the time. I remember vividly when I was, uh, Telling a, I was reading a story to some kids in a younger class when I was in elementary school, and I could barely finish the story because my eyes were watering, and I was, like, ready to sneeze. All, and this shit followed me around all the time. Finally, when I was, like, 38, I went to a um, doctor, an allergist in town here, and I said, what's going on? I need to figure out. I need to get the battery, the full battery. What am I allergic to? Obviously, it's something, you know, because I always freaking s- stuffed up sniffling and he ran the full battery of tests, and he said, you have sinitis. You know what that is? Well, and when you tack on the suffix itis to anything, it just means inflammation of right. the sinuses. So he, he couldn't narrow it down. I didn't have like a pronounced allergy to anything. He just said, you have inflamed sinuses. Well, guess what? When I do low carb, and for me, carbs are the trigger for inflammation. So whether it's keto or carnivore or any version that's low carb, I don't sneeze. I don't sniffle. My eyes don't run. That inflammation is so greatly reduced. Um, so, and uh, you know, that's, and it's, it's, it's like flipping a light switch. Like if I fall off the wagon, like we went to a hotel. I remember one time I was very good, low carb for like a couple months. I was pretty lean and we went to a hotel and I started eating the, the, uh, continental breakfast, mm-hmm. <laughs> like bagels and yeah. donuts and shit. Yep. I literally like just about had to go take a nap and I started stuffing up like within that day. It was, it was coming right back. So I'm, I'm, I'm not Michaela Peterson, but I could definitely notice a difference. And since I've been doing uh, the low carb, almost fully carnivore since we've started the podcast here. Carnivore-ish. Carnivore-ish. You like to call it. Dirty carnivore, whatever you want to call it. Again, not dogmatic. Um, Speaking of not the dogmatic. Inflammation is greatly reduced. So that's. Yeah, here, let me let me stay on track oh, real okay. quick. Yep. So inflammation reduction, and that also, you know, inflammation is a cause of a lot of joint pain. 
I mean, I'm, I'll be 50 in a few months. I got no aches, no pains, no nothing. I mean, I feel amazing on this diet. And that's not carnivore focused versus keto. I mean, it's either basically for me, if I'm zero carb, I'm feeling awesome. Digestion, no gas, no bloating of any kind. And this is where I get it from vegetables. This is the difference for me on carnivore. Back to the inflammation. Yeah. Um, another keto group story to mm-hmm. share. We have um, we have a gal in our keto group that is has really bad RA and rheumatoid arthritis. Correct, sir. Okay. And she has um, experienced zero RA symptoms since being wow. keto. That is zero. Insane. That's Zero. Insane. And then get this. She goes out to dinner mm-hmm. and she orders some Asian bullshit salad. And she's like, well, it's, ooh, sounds really good. There's no carbs in that. It's a salad. Well, she didn't realize it until she ate it. Felt, thought it tasted probably too good to be true. Right. <laughs> but got home and then tracked it and put it in a calorie tracker. And the, the Asian salad was like Asian zing. And it oh. had 450,000 grams of sugar. It's a weird kind of sauce. Yeah. Sugary sauce. Tons of sugar. <clears throat> and um, she said, oh, shit. She's, and then she texted me, what should I do? What should I do? I'm like, <laughs> it's one day. Who cares? Tomorrow's Stick your finger down your throat. <laughs> Barf now. It's, enjoy it. You had one day. Enjoy yeah. it. Right. Make the best of it. And the next day she woke up and she couldn't bend her thumb. Holy shit. Because the quick. RA was just like right, just back. right back. Wow. Yep. Yeah. I mean, so you, you're basically, you have the keys to, to fix that. And now RA is another thing where they say, once you're on that path, it's chronic. It's, it's, it's hereditary. It's, it's chronic. It's, it's chronic. Just, it's uh, what it's a, the term where it just keeps getting progressive. worse. Progressive. It's, yeah. You're, you're, just live your best life. Yeah. Just do the best you can. Enjoy it. Take a couple Advil. And here's here's where I get fired up because mm-hmm. I think I'm not very dogmatic when it comes to dieting. Yeah. I'm, I'll support anybody, whatever they try. Just do it with the intent of being healthy. But here's where I get pissed off. When I hear stories like people getting off their type 2 di- diabetes meds yes. and turning around their blood pressure dropping or their rheum- rheumatoid arthritis disappearing, right? come at me again with that fad diet bullshit. <laughs> I'm so sick right. of that. God right. damn it. Just shut up. And if it works, you know, that's that's where it's, it's – they call it an N of 1, right? Like a study. Right, right. You know, like they're saying experiment on yourself. And if Be your own N of 1, right. Exactly, yeah. I mean – and if she's running around the office, you know, telling everybody they need to do this too, that's when it gets sketchy. It's like, and that's the problem. People are so excited. They're like, I yeah. want you to be happy as I am. Exactly. So they share it. They're not trying to. It's like bearing witness in religion, right? Right. You feel like yep. your duty is to convert others. And as we know from sales. And that CrossFit. That never works. <laughs> you, that is the CrossFit. You best have you to can do that. is lead by example. You right. Know? But it's, <laughs> it's when you find something that works and you enjoy it and it's. It completely turns your life around. Yeah. Whether it's CrossFit or Jesus, yeah. what do you want to do? CrossFit Jesus. Testify. CrossFit want, Jesus. That's right? a good name for a band. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> they all have traps and play guitar. <laughs> but yeah, you can, that's what you want to do, dude. Oh, hell yeah. You want to testify. You want yeah. to say, it's like, don't you, you wanna, can be as happy as yeah. me. Well, don't you want to reverse that type 2 diabetes that is going to have end with you getting your foot chopped off. And the best part is when you look them straight in the <laughs> eye and they go, nope, I'm happy. Right. I'm happy. I'm living my life. I love my life. I drink beer and eat pizza. That's when I- you drop the line on them that the guy dropped on you. Right. Or, yeah, that's a great line. Which was? You want some other dude walking your daughter down the aisle. Exactly. But the other line is, yeah, you know what? I used to say that too, but I didn't. I didn't feel good. Right. I wasn't happy until you know you're not, you weren't. Yep. It's just ignorance is bliss. Yeah. You're like, this is it. I'm going to, I'm, 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 I'm my dad. So I'm, I'm going to, it's hereditary. Yeah. It's genetic. I don't have a choice when I sit down and go, <laughs> you have to do that because you're getting old. No, <laughs> bullshit. No, you don't. Bullshit. You can feel good. Right. I mean, I'm almost, I'll be 50 this year. And I Although got, I still do. <sighs> yeah. Just so I have it. I got no aches, no pain. So um, digestion, great. Stable energy. This is a huge one. When I was, you know, full on McDonald's standard American diet, you're wore out by two, you know, you get that like thing where you're just like, I need to lay down. Right. Yep. I never have a loss of energy now. It's just, it's just a static high level. 
So I'm constantly have a good amount of energy. We call that meat meth, right? Right. <laughs> so I'm on meat meth. That, it, it's it's a strange stable energy. That term is probably new to most people, but it's you're used to that insulin spike, right? It's and it's and very evident. It's very evident when you do low intense aerobic exercise. Mm. Cause it's just like, that's when you notice it. I don't, I'm not like raging to, I just want to surge, Okay, but I'm, I'm not tired either. Right. It's just steady and you just clip. There's along. always a little bit more in reserve, right? There's always stuff there when, yeah. you, when you go to the tank. That's, that's how I feel. So that's a, another benefit. Um, testosterone. Okay. This is, you know, a huge one because there's some, and again, read the books because I'm way too dumb to explain this, but there's all kinds of components of animal products that are only present in animal products too, that contribute to allow the body to produce testosterone. And a lot of vegans suffer from low T. And human growth hormone. Yeah. Um, people are leaner uh, when you're on carnivore because once you get fat adapted and your body's burning the fat and you eat less, first of all, because hung, uh, the meat is so much more satiating. You only eat when you're hungry. Yeah, you only eat when you're hungry, so you're going to lose body fat that way. Plus, you're in ketosis. I think Sean Baker, even though he's been doing this solid for like three years, he is in ketosis about half the time, he says. And he measures every day. He's got his glucose monitor. He, But because he's eating just meat, so he's yeah. experiencing gluconeogenesis, where exactly. his body's making glucose. It's making it. Yep. Yep. So like a maple tree. So he's in, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. What's that analogy again? Oh, you don't have to eat sugar to make sugar. A maple tree doesn't make, eat maple syrup to make maple syrup. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. So yeah, it's more satiating. You're less hangry. I Like I've told the story before, but I remember I used to get hungry between breakfast and lunch, right? You're talking like two, three hour difference. Like, oh my God, I ate breakfast at eight. Is it noon yet? It's 10 and I'm freaking hungry. Dude, now I, now I get hungry between supper and supper. <laughs> right. Well, not even barely. Right. When you're eating OMAD and you're only eating the most satiating per calorie product, which is animal products, you. I work out a lot, though. So yeah. I, I don't afford that luxury. For me, by 12, well, you 12 need to 30, I'm starving. You need to fuel it. Yeah. Yeah. You're, and you but get, it's okay to feel starving. Yeah. That's what, you get to listen to your body. Right. Because most of the time when you're on the standard American diet, are you actually hungry? No. You're just mentally Did you hungry. you die? Yeah. <laughs> You're just mentally hungry. Right. You're not physically, physiologically actually hungry. But that's what causes people to fail. So if you're satiated and like we talked about, satiety per calorie, you know, meat is one of the best ways to get that. Um, skin conditions. This is one of the things that uh, Paul Saladino talks about. He had really bad eczema. And really? Yeah. I, I didn't, I don't remember that. Yeah. And he had like big weeping patches on his back. He, he talks about, and he said when he went carnivore, that after a few weeks that cleared up, went away. And whenever he goes off the wagon and, you know, gets, eats some uh, carbs, basically, um, that stuff starts creeping back in. And I don't know if that's a, again, I'm not smart enough to explain all this stuff. You got to go research this stuff yourself, but there's Here's where we'll get into the argument about um, whether plants are a benefit or a negative, right? This is this is a big point of controversy because the carnivore advocates, you know, like Sean Baker basically says, number one, there's three macronutrients, right? Protein, carbs, and fat. Only two of those are essential. And carbs and, is not one. And plants – or not, and you know, the you can get all the things from animal products, and plants are non essential. And some of them go to the point where they say, not only are they not essential, they have chemicals in them that are meant to defend against attacks in nature. So, they and those things will also cause damage to you, the eater. So, not only are plants not beneficial, they can be poisonous. and that's why they have to be processed so heavily. Like if you just go into the jungle and start eating shit, you're going to die, right? Maybe. I mean, you can 50-50. You can you know, your banana. odds are not you're good. You eat pull a banana from a tree, you're going to be Yeah, fine. banana, but because we know what bananas but they're, are. But they're, they're called phytonutrients. Exactly. And that, that exactly, that's the term. Okay, now you, so you bring up phytonutrients, and I have a thing on that. Let's see here. Okay, so here's a thread that – no, this is Paul Saladino's opinion – Phytonutrients, no such thing. There are zero vitamins, minerals, or cofactors that humans need to be optimal that cannot be found in animal foods. The reverse is not true. 
there are many zoo nutrients, he puts in quotes, necessary for humans to thrive found only in animal foods. And then he's got a whole thread where he talks about every mineral and chemical and in pretty great detail. But here's where... And I'll put the link in the show notes here's to where me Twitter and, feed. Here's where me and Polly <laughs> kind of go our separate ways. Right. Um, none of those phytonutrients or zoo nutrients. Um, <laughs> I like that term. Zoo I nutrients. do too. Are just cut up zoo nutrients. Are central. They're, none of them are essential to human life. But they can improve quality of life when used as tools. Maybe. So no, it I, it's for me. Right. For me, it definitely. That's the argument. It, That's the controversy. It definitely boosts anaerobic and anabolic performance, without a doubt. Um, no, and what form are gym, you talking about? Like, talk about a specific food or like what? If I'm a little carb heavier, just to to put it in a real world example, if I'm a little carb heavier, um, let's say sweet potatoes, white potatoes, and maybe right. a little bit of rice. I don't like rice. I, I don't think rice is a grain. I, I, I don't care for it. Right. Um, but especially like sweet potatoes and stuff like that and a lot of greens and just a lot of vegetables in general plus fruit. Mm-hmm. Dude, I can lift the gym. <laughs> but when I go strict uh, either keto or or even carnivore, because I've tried dabbled carnivore a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, and it remind me why I didn't stick with it. But um, nothing. I'm weak. I'm weak. I've heard that. And some people talk about that there's kind of an adaptation phase where your body has to get used to producing like the, was it the gluconeo, whatever, Glucone-neo where it genesis. produces the glucose needed. Because if you watch Sean Baker do his rowing, I mean, all he's eaten is meat for years now, and he's destroying that, and he's you know operating at a world class level. And True, he's, he's eating four pounds of meat a day. Yeah, and that's that's him, and he's adapted. So you know, right. And then there's there's a, a, more people who say what you say, which is if you're a really high performance and you're doing tons of endurance and really you know calorie burning type activities that they, and lifting, they almost have to fuel that with yep. some type of carbohydrate. Yep, or like those long distance runners and you know. So there, this is definitely not settled. You know, there's guys it's on both perfect sides. Perfect example, as I explained it the other day um, to somebody that I was, we were talking about this same subject, and I said, when I'm keto and super low carb, um, I can run in aerobic capacity at just like steady state zone two mm-hmm. forever. And I don't get tired. Right. I barely start to sweat. I just look around. I'm like, oh, I've watched three TV shows. It's 90 minutes later. <laughs> but then when I go, if I were to go anaerobic, which means like kick go it, balls out. Go not even balls out. Just kick it up another notch to where I'm running faster or doing CrossFit or yep. hit training. Some people say it or doing those battle ropes. Right. That would be anaerobic. And you feel like you're running. Out I of felt gas. like I feel like I left the parking brake on. Okay. Literally, right. it's just it. <laughs> I just I hate it. It's it's the worst feeling ever. Okay. Um, and this is this is where we say you got to experiment, right? Absolutely. You got to know what works for you. So not to rat out our good friend, Polly, Dr. (laughs) Sal. I don't want to rat him out, but. Which ironically, he has salad in his last name. Right. (laughs) But so to to actually rat him out, he eats fruit. Oh, you know what? He actually eats honey too. He eats honey. He eats raw and filtered. He's with the Hansa right now. Have you seen his videos? Yeah. 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 He's over in Africa. Yeah. He's eating honey right right out of a tree. Yep. He's grabbing the comb and just. Yep. It was pretty cool. But yeah, he'll eat raw honey to to what? Satiety. Feel his workouts. And feel his workouts. Yeah. Right. So, and he eats berries in season. Right. And the percentage is very, you know, tiny compared to He doesn't to eat a meat. No, yeah. no, it's half his, three quarters of his plain on raspberries. He's ripped. He's got a six pack. He's got big muscles. He's working out and a, he's, a ton and burning the and calories. His, and his, he's cognitively super sharp. And he, oh yeah, exactly. And he knows he's been an N of one. He's experimented with this stuff so much that he knows where the threshold is for, and what foods will cause his eczema to come back and all that stuff. So he stays right. under that threshold. Yep. He says, I've tried, you know, int- reintroducing, I think it was like sweet potatoes. And he says he has massive like digestive problems, you know? So he has to, you have to understand what you can tolerate and this is where you need to experiment. And that's why the carnivore diet is great as a, as an elimination diet. That's for why sure. Michaela Peterson, she said, okay, obviously something in my diet is causing this. And she, Eliminated everything else till she got down to meat and water and salt, and all the problems went away. 
So, and she's an extreme example. Most people can tolerate a wide, much wider range. So yeah. if you're sitting here saying plants are bad for you, plants are toxic. And the way he describes it is there's a spectrum of plant toxicity. Well, it's plants, some people are, have, it's, a, it's a natural protected protection from, from yeah, just from beginning reaction. Yeah, yeah. They don't want to get eaten. They're they trying to, eaten. they're trying to, and make that's why we have not. to process plants so heavily before you can eat them. You got to boil them, crush them, you know, heat them, cook them, do all this stuff. Um, so it's a defense against, well, it's a way to deal with those those defense mechanisms that they have. But that's not to say just because he might say there's a spectrum of plant toxicity that you are going to be somebody who's susceptible to that. Some people sure. go through their whole lives, do just straight keto, eat, eat fatty meats and uh, green vegetables and thrive and be optimal. Right. And then there's guys like, or people like Michaela Peterson, who if they have... You know, anything, use any of that, and then they just brush up against a pretzel. <laughs> right. She's in the hospital. Exa yeah, I mean, it's crazy. It's huh? a, yeah, that's brutal life. So you I gotta, you know, her. you gotta really uh, experiment and and give yourself time too. Like, that's, and that's one of the problems with me. When I, the first time I did carnivore, um, I think I lasted the first swing at it. I think I lasted like four days. Right, because I could shit through a screen door. Oh, a lot of people. Oh my God, it was it was violent. And I'm, I just can't do this. <laughs> You're like Jeff Daniels and Dumb and Dumber. Yes, exactly. Like, Feet all the way off the ground, <laughs> just holding on to the <laughs> lid. God damn it, it was so bad. That is one of the main people talk about in the adaptation phase. You know, like the first couple of weeks. If you look in the carnivore groups on Facebook, there's a lot of that. That's the fat people. Yeah, people say. Yep. It goes away, and you gotta just kind of ride it out and hang in there for a I couple weeks. I would have died. <laughs> <laughs> but kidding, kidding, of course. If, if you were somebody who needed to be carnivore because of autoimmune stuff or whatever, you would just have to ride that out. Yep. And then once you're fat adapted and you get used to that. But um, I'm I'm this I'm similar. It's not quite as violent and, and <laughs> yeah. as not as long. But I'm similar when I go from higher carb, like after the holidays when oh, I yeah. eat all that garbage and then go back to keto. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. My gut's just yeah. Like, you're you're throwing your body for a loop. Yeah. Yeah, your 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 gut health is way out of whack. <laughs> you're just sitting there, and uh, every time you uh, you, you feel uh, that feeling in your stomach, you're like, "Crap, I gotta go to the toilet again." Yep, looks like I'm working from home. <laughs> <laughs> so, a couple more advantages or pros to carnivore uh, for me: the simplicity. I mean, eat meat. You know what you're eating. <laughs> eat meat. I don't have to think about it. It's like I just fry some hamburger, make a steak, uh, fry it in some butter. It really does take the boredom out of the equation. Well, well I'm not really hungry. I'm just bored. Yeah. I have another piece of meat. No, yeah. that's what I'm bored of. Exactly. I don't want any more meat. Well, tough shit. That's the diet. It Go keeps, sit back me, down. It keeps me on the rails. Yeah. Right? Because that's, all, that's my only options. If I'm doing carnivore, hardcore, then you can't just go snack on some shit. Right. You know, you <laughs> yeah, and it's so satiating per calorie. The satiety per calorie is so high. You're not even, you don't even get that fake hunger. Usually, when I'm eating OMAD one meal a day, yep, I'm literally not. I mean, I haven't eaten since last night at Speakeasy at six, and it's five eighteen right now. We're recording this, and I'm not even that hungry. That's In fact, awesome. I could probably go another day. That's awesome. You know, I don't. But so I don't, that's I don't want huge. you to. I want you to start eating more. You know, I need to. We're talking about when we get to my <laughs> tracker here. I'm uh, stalling out a little, but yeah. So the simplicity of it is is huge. Um, <clears throat> so again, judge for yourself. You know, research these guys: Sean Baker, Paul Saladino, Ken Berry is another one. Ken Berry, MD. He he was a guy that was standard American diet, then keto, then now he's carnivore, and he posts videos like two or three times a week on YouTube huge following, and he's an MD also. He really knows his shit, and he really dumbs it down nicely. You know, he's kind of a good alternative to the Saladinos of the world where they're super intelligent. Um, Ken Berry, also very intelligent, but he knows how to frame it in such a way that uh, you know we can understand it easily. So check those out and uh, grab these books and if you're interested. A couple of the – I'm holding them up on you. Go to YouTube, The Carnivore Diet by Sean Baker. A couple of the common the theme, themes with those – are um, the carnivore that where the name comes from? Yeah. Um, a lot of people. The one of the arguments is, well, yeah, but people lit, died when they were twenty eight back then. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. do I really want to do the caveman diet? Well, yeah, because one of the main themes that, especially Saladino, he calls it the remembering. He's basically saying 
We need to eat like our ancestors did because that during that evolutionary period is when our brains grew and we evolved into the uh, amazing humans that we are now right. from the apes. Right. So, and it was uh, the big reason for that was because we ate those ancestors. What did they eat? They meat. fasted and they eat meat. They fasted and they ate meat, and the only reason they ate plants <clears throat> was when meat wasn't available and they were unsuccessful hunting. Exactly. If they were successful hunting, meat was the main course. <laughs> right. So. But it's yeah, not that, until time got times got tough. Yep. And so the, what's the, the argument you hear when people say that? Yeah, but it, well, cavemen died when they were twenty five. So why would I want to replicate that? My argument is well, yeah, because you didn't have TV shots. <laughs> well, inf- infant mortality. <laughs> well, and medicine. Yeah, and medicine, and they, if you got a toothache, you're pretty much going to die. Right. Because if, you, if your tooth got infected, you were dead. Right. So we didn't have modern medical interventions that we do now. So I usually don't entertain it. Because it's a yeah. stupid argument. Exactly. So th- that diet combined with the medicine of today, you know, you can really, you can thrive and live a long time. But I, I think it's worth pointing out again mm-hmm. that the reason we introduced grains and other other nutrients from plants was because of s- severe famine. Right. Because it was needed, available, we didn't make some food, yeah. right? And it was, and it was, you could reproduce it, and you could get by on the cheap. Mm-hmm. Um, Great Depression. Oh, Where yeah. did they go into town to get right. bags of corn and rice, potatoes. made flowers, and, and yep. bags of potatoes? And if you were lucky at Christmas, you got a small roast yep. or, or a small chicken. They still prized meat as the most valuable thing. It right, it wasn't available. Right, and they couldn't afford it. It's. They weren't not eating it because it was bad for you. <laughs> exactly. And that's just so weird how that's, again, you know, the food pyramid and all this crap in the last, basically our entire lifetimes, uh, fatty meats have been demonized and it's really bullshit. Um, but we'd rather get that veggie burger with 1,407 <laughs> grams or milligrams of sodium. Shit. Made out of God knows what. Right. But yeah, well, at least we got rid of that evil meat that was in there. Now right. we can eat the rest of the Whopper meal. Yeah. <laughs> Bullshit. Um, one, one of the other uh, criticisms of carnivore is people always say, you know, they look at the price of ribeyes and they they say, well, meat's so damn expensive. I can't do carnivore. Or even you get this rap with keto too. You know, I can't do carnivore. It's too expensive. Well, a couple my re- retort to that is I'm only eating once a day. I'm the cheapest date in the house. It's often my argument um, so I've that, been, that's number one. I've been criticized a lot for saying eating healthy is not expensive. You're just eating too much. Right. Well, and guess what you're, if you never have to go to the hospital. Right. Guess how much you're saving in, in your lifetime there. Right. Because when but, I'm picking up my insurance plans and stuff, I'm going high deductible. I never use medical services. Right. Uh, yep. you know, so think how much money I'm saving on my life there versus people that are always constantly in the hospital have to get a very expensive monthly premium, low deductible plan right. because they know they're going to be a high utilizer. I'm going to be a low utilizer. I want to use the hospital uh, for a morgue when I'm like 110. That's that's. You know, other than that, I want to stay the hell out of there. Plus, it doesn't have to be ribeyes. Go get a chuck exactly. roast. Right. The, the, or pork, like a pork yep. roast. Yeah. Dude, go to Hornbachers. They're giving yeah. that shit away. <laughs> right. And ground beef. Like right. w- one, one thing we did was – that's we, my patty. Yeah. Every day. <laughs> exactly. We found a farmer rancher uh, locally. I forget where they're from exactly, but a couple hours away from here. And we buy like half a cow a year or whatever. And we just got a deep freeze. And we have her grinded up into ground beef and steaks. We, you know, that's mostly what we want. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we took the, we told them to take the liver and grind it up, put it in the ground beef. That way you get some of the, there's, the another, best. there's another uh, controversy in the car- carnivore community is like, do you eat nose to tail or do you just eat muscle meat? Like Sean Baker, all he literally eats is rib muscle. Eyes, yeah, just he's muscle not, meat. He's and not he's, an organ meat guy. And he's destroying these records and optimally performing at his age, which is like 55. And then Saladino eats nose to tail. So he's stressing the importance of organs, thinks it's in, in, important for the various nutrients they have. You know, I don't know enough to eat. I For me, uh, liver and stuff, I just... I'm not a fan, so I mostly eat muscle meat too. But like we, I said, we have the liver ground up into the ground beef too. Yeah. So that's a way you can kind of sneak it in there. Yeah, and then put some onions and jalapenos in there, and then you don't even notice the liver. <laughs> right, exactly. You still get all the benefits. You know what the new fat is? What's that? Eating raw liver. Oh, yeah. See, there's 
yeah, there's just like there's the the really kooky vegans. There's the really kooky carnivores who are eat raw, raw liver. Oh god, and not and have any sense of smell. Oh, I don't how know. do you take that bite? I just how do you even get it close to your face? I can't. Te- it's, for me, it's a texture thing. I yeah, can't, I well, can't you don't do have to meat. chew it. Oh, oh I love raw meat. I can't do it. I love raw flesh. I can't do sushi. I can't do any oh, really? raw. Like what, what's that beef tartare? No, oh, I can't do tiger it. Tiger meat. No. It's so good. I, I can't do it. Oh. I can't eat it. Talk about getting back to your primal self. <laughs> well, that and that's the reason why people do it because they're yeah. kind of they're almost you're you're destroying fully going back yeah. to the caveman style. Yep. You know, so before uh, fire. I'm not there yet. Um <laughs> It's so, gotta be a really good cut of beef. Yeah. And yeah. So that's kind of you know one of the objections you hear is that it's too expensive. So if you're only eating once a day or less than your standard American diet. This does not have to be an expensive way of eating. And all. again, it doesn't have to be Wagyu beef. Yeah, it doesn't have to be. <laughs> well, when Sean Baker was cooking his his beef the other day, he has this Wagyu beef tallow. That's what he cooks it in. No way. Yeah. So he's cheating. Oh, but, well, I don't oh, know. He, he's I mean, making he, Wagyu beef out of regular well, beef. No, they make the the tallow. That's what they make yeah. the butter, the tallow out of. Yeah. He buys this big tub of Wagyu beef tallow, and that's what he cooks his ribeyes in. Show off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's that cost? I don't know. Four thousand dollars. He's ounce. a doctor. He's got money. Um, so that's you know that's kind of the carnivore diet. Uh, do your research. Give it a try yourself. Um, see, you know, for me it was an easy thing to adopt because I didn't really like vegetables, so it was an easy sell. But even my training, my conditioning, my years of just hearing the same thing and eat your veggies, you know, all your life, you just even that was still uh, you know bothering me. So I. I I'm there now. I don't need them. I don't feel like I need them. So I'll let you know what happens. Um, so let's get into uh, our tracker here and see if I've lost any weight and my status of how fat is Josh? All right. Well, let's get the, the, old, the old tracker up you, here. Dude, you stomped over your touchdown call. I know. That's <laughs> pretty fat. I forgot. That's the best I always, part. I always forget. <laughs> Okay, so as you can see by the tracker here, um, down another pound, and I was going to talk about this. Uh, it's funny because it's kind of a logarithmic loss. You know, you lose a lot in the beginning, and then it gets tougher and tougher. I only dropped one exactly one pound this week. Uh, dropped half inch on the thigh. That could just be due to measurement errors too. Um, a and, little, and this is where people. This is like mile eighteen in the marathon. Mm-hmm. People are like, "I can't finish. Fuck this. I quit." Yeah, I only lost a pound. Fuck yep. it. Yep. I'm suffering, you know, not suffering, but yep. I'm being so I can't cut any more calories. Right. You don't have to. Right. And we were just talking about that off air is maybe I need to eat more. 100% you right? need to eat more. Because I've been working out, so I'm trying to get my basal metabolic rate up because I want to be a fat-burning furnace right. while I'm resting. And you do that by working we're, out. We're designed to store fat. Right. It's our evolutionary, who we are. Our bodies have taught ourselves to store fat yep. because famine's coming. Yeah. If anything's taught us over the last two and a half million years, it's that famine's eventually coming. <laughs> so save up what you got. So we do that on purpose. So no matter, and we talked about that in the Seco episode, but retouch on it a little bit, but your body is going to slow its metabolism down to a level that allows to store some of the nutrients you take in or the energy you take in, no matter how much that is. Right. So what we need to do is we need to tell our body. Because it's trying to conserve energy right, for when you need it. Right. When that, when that saber-toothed tiger is chasing yeah, your ass. It doesn't want you super lean. Right. So what happens is it goes, all right, well, we're going to slow this down, pump the brakes a little bit. You're not going to burn as much fat yep, off. Yep. We're, we're, we're going to slow this down, and we're going to store some of this. And then as we talked about in that Seco episode, you get down, you dwindle your way down to 500 calories, and your body's like, screw you. And I can store this here too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it's, it starts storing it's it. It's going to fight so, against you. So you hit that plateau. So what do you do? You reverse diet. Right. Which essentially is exactly how it sounds. You just add calories. No, you don't go to Old Country Buffet. And it's not Oreos. And it's not Oreos. And it's slight. Yep. It's slight. What Ultimately, what we're looking for is not a gain. 
we what we want to do is we want to get maybe a little gain, just pound or two, but we want to find more of that maintenance mode and being less of a less of a drastic deficit of calories. Yes. Yep. Because in the if you're in a maintenance to a little bit above for a couple of weeks, your body's going to go. All right, we can stop storing all this stuff now, and we'll start right. using it, and then you can do that, and then you can start creeping back down. And working out is still a big piece of this because well, you, have sure. to, you have to turn your body into a fat burning furnace, right? So you got to keep keep that uh, lean. You got to build lean muscle mass, so, right? So just to let you know what I've been doing, I've been working out every other day, uh, doing push ups every day. We'll get you it every day. I got to rest those muscles too. Uh -huh. I'm still doing push-ups every day. So, um, that's just something losers say. I feel like recomposition's occurring slowly but surely. And so as our final measurement here, let's get the old tape out. We got to do the waist. Oh, yeah. This is this is the fun one here. I don't even have to really move anymore since we started doing the preliminary I want to give stuff. everybody a nice view here. So I feel like it's getting less. It's get it is getting less. There's, there's less there people on YouTube. Check it out. All right, I'm gonna need you to turn. I didn't get up. Thirty-six. Oh yeah, buddy. All right, so it's another three quarters of an inch on the waist. That's not a pant size. That's above your belly button. No cheating. All right, that's not that's not the uh, thirty waist jeans with the giant gut hanging over. over the top of it. Right. Yeah, that's actually reduction in my circumference. Which, as we've talked about many times, is the biggest single, if you had to pick one single biggest determiner of your health outcomes, that's that's it. Yep. You know, if you had to pick one measurement, your waist circumference. So to recap, I've gone from 41.5 to 36. So that's 5. That's point, legit for 5.5 inches lost that's, on the waist. That's fantastic. In five weeks. That's basically an inch a week. Right. 16.8 pounds down and... Minus 2.7% body fat. That's the one that's really stalled. For the past four weeks, my love handles haven't really changed. Haven't, you know. So Granted, caliper in yeah, one spot. It's not super accurate. Pretty primitive, folks. Yeah. It, it's, it's, we did it because it makes for good TV a couple of the first episodes. <laughs> but, um, yeah, you need a, a, a number of measurements. So, well, actually, and this brings me to the next piece was we're going to talk about how I can get some more accurate numbers. So, uh like I said, I like to stay away from the hospitals, like stay out of the doctor's office, right? Yep. But I, uh, it was funny because I got uh, new insurance for my work and stuff. So my wife said, well, I should go get a physical. So I'm going to do that. And then I, when they were calling me, I said, can you do a, a scan where you check the visceral body fat and all that? So they're going to yeah. refer all that out for me. But you were going to tell me what that's called. It's called a what in body the in body scan. That's a that's a name brand. Okay, it's a name. Um, there's a couple of name brands out there, but there's also methods. Um, MSUM. What's the it, definitive way to do it? The best, the gold standard is the dunking, right? Is the dunking. So that's that's submerging in water. You're yep. submerging in water, and basically, fat is a different buoyancy than muscle in your bones and stuff. So they can tell. Yep. By the how buoyant you are and the density of the water, how much water you displace. What your body fat percentage is, right? If Based on the volume of water. If you're floatier, that's not good. <laughs> right. You're essentially walking around with water wings. So you, so you <laughs> want to you want to drop down to the to the rock like a rock to the bottom of the tank. Yeah, hey, that's why they call it inner tube <laughs> around your waist. Right. Yeah, exactly. So, so that's the gold standard. If you really want to know exactly what's going on, uh, body fat percentage wise. Right? Sure. Yeah, so, no, and then, it, 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 and, and there's then the a second pod. best is that, okay, what's that? What's a bod um, pod? You can Googleize it, but it's just a, I don't know the sciencey stuff behind it or the technology, but you sit in this pod. It looks like it's from the Jetsons. Right. It's kind of like an egg shape. Yeah. And you yeah. just sit in there and it goes for like so five minutes. What is it doing? Is it air pressure or is it like some type of magnetics or? Dude, honestly, I don't know. Okay. Yep. I really don't know. I'll find a link and put them in the show notes to see what the hell these all these things are. But and it's probably really easy to figure out. But so that's the I, I second have, best way. I don't care. I only have so much room in here, and <laughs> right. I'm not. I don't have room for that. <laughs> yeah. I gotta. I gotta pick what I decide to remember. You gotta remember who plays left tackle, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> so and then the third, well, the third most accurate way is this in body scan, right? And this is based, yeah. based on electromagnetism yep. and resistance, yep. and you're hanging yep. onto a couple of things yeah. and you're standing. Yep, and, and it goes through your hands and your okay. feet and 
and it just measures. But it's a quick. The electrodes go through. You it, said it costs like 10 bucks, right? 10 bucks, 10, 20 bucks, depends on who does it. Yeah. Um, I know CrossFit Fargo does, has it, offers it. Um, I want to say it's 20 bucks. Uh, CrossFit EHP and Moorhead, they also do it. And it, what is it? It prints out a report, right? It prints out a report. And what it, most importantly, what the report is, is establishing a baseline. Right. Kind of like we are with your little spreadsheet here. So you can see changes. Yeah, exactly. Um, so even if it's not super accurate, at least you know if you're moving in the right direction. Right, right. But if it the, does give you- the scale isn't moving. Right. What are the, some of the key metrics it gave you? The, does it, it gave you the basal metabolic rate, right? The basic metabolic rate. And that's expressed in calories yep. per day that you're yep. burning. Yep. At rest. Yep. Okay. And it'll it'll divide up. It'll tell you how much fat is in your arms, in your legs, in your trunk. Oh, wow. Yep. And does it give you an overall body fat percentage number, kind of like we're doing with attempting to get with the caliper? It also gives you an overall number. So, um, but it'll also give you the pounds in per and percentages oh, in wow. your leg, in your left leg. Oh, it'll wow. tell how much, you left, how much fat is in your left leg. Yeah, I'm curious. I want to do this now so I can see where I'm at. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, is it accurate? I don't know. I've the most important thing is do it often, establish a baseline, and then do it at the s fasted at the same time of day every time. Right. So you have an as accurate of a yeah. Well, it's comparison. the same. So so it's the same. Yep. So if you standardize it, it'll be your baseline. What you discover over time, that data is going to be a little more reliable. Right on. Well, as soon as I. Uh, get myself dexed or dunked or whatever. I'm, I'm going to try to do as much of that as I can because I'm honestly curious now to see what my real accurate body fat percentage is. Yeah. I, it, like I said, this the, the caliper thing made for good TV. Yeah. But – Just a guess. It's entertaining, but yeah. it's – it's dude, I, I'll eat my hat if you're 30%. You think – what do you think I am? I'm weight less. Less? Okay. Yeah, because yeah, I've installed the last four weeks at 30.1 yep. based on the caliper. But, yeah, I feel like I'm definitely dropping. Yeah. Um, but plus, you can just tell, like, you know, looking in the mirror, right? Uh, right. I mean, and how your clothes fit. Right. You know, you start to look leaner. You start to see ribs. Yeah. I mean, I can, I don't, for those on YouTube, like, if I really, like, clinch it out, like, I almost got the beginnings of the idea of almost sort of the outline of with a shadow of almost abs. You know, <laughs> You have you have a four pack of Fosters. Yeah, you know, <laughs> it's not really a shut up, asshole. I hate you. No, but for those who are on YouTube, I mean, when I'm like really clenching it in, you know, it's way before that was not possible to do. No, 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 no. We can so, show the tape. Yeah, I even had well, comments on about the video about it. look at his face. <laughs> right <laughs> on the first, ep yeah. When I look back and look, watch our first episode, which was only one month ago. <laughs> I, I said, look, look way at his fatter. face. Yeah. She says, look at his face. You can even see it. And I, said, I know. Oh, maybe he's allergic to something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> On the maybe first he got episode. stung by a bee. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, you know, in five, this is in one month, you know, exactly. Yeah. It's been one month and three days that we've, that we started this. So that's not a crazy amount of time. No. To make some and, pretty significant changes. And to use your line that you always use, have you been suffering? No. Have oh, you been no. going to bed starving? In fact, you know, the one the one of the things we point out all the time is you're not denying yourself, you're just delaying gratification for the pursuit of a higher goal. Right. Which makes and I'll say this all the time, which makes when you finally consume the product, you know, the your meal for mm -hmm. the day, it's so freaking good. Because of that, it's always sweeter when you delay that gratification. Right. As opposed to just eating in one Oreo every 30 seconds for your entire day. You just you wouldn't even care anymore. You'd be like, Jesus, another Oreo. But when I'm looking forward to that steak all day. I had a discussion with it's amazing. A discussion with a young man today um, who was really wishy-washy. He goes in and out whether or not he wants to work with me on nutrition stuff. And it's not a money thing. He just doesn't know that he wants to make that commitment. It's never yet. a money thing. No, it's never a money thing. He just doesn't know if he wants to, to make say that, that commitment. That's just an excuse. Well, for sure, because they don't want to waste the money when knowing they're not going to do it. Yep. So, so I'm talking to a young man, 34 years old. Yeah, I can, I can say I don't have to say his name. <laughs> um, 34 years old. Talking about you, Bill. Fasted glucose at of 390. <laughs> 390 at 34. Holy fuck. So I'm like, that's dude, not a good number. Dude, I'm worried. Legit worried about you. Right. Um, is he just eating standard American diet? Oh, yeah. 
Wow. Yep. And booze. Right. But he said, oh, no, I, I know what to do. Um, and I said, yeah, no, I don't think you do. <laughs> yeah, I just need to eat less and move more. I'm like, uh. how's that working out for you? What do you mean? And I said, well, you've been doing that for three years. How's it working? Well, I haven't been doing it. So then you don't know what to do. Yeah, what's that quote again? To know and to not do is to not know. Right, right. Yeah, exactly. If you know that you're supposed to eat less calories and move and exercise and and you don't do it, then you don't know what to do. Or at a minimum, you don't know how to do it. Yeah, you're, so, you're obviously not getting there. So finally, this wasn't getting through to him. And he's like, well, I just, I, I go to the wing night with the boys and. I love chicken wings. Nothing and, wrong with wings. Right. And I, he goes, naked oh, wings. I love beer, but he, but he chases yeah. it down with a tray of French fries. And, right. And then Bunch after that, beer. and he gets home and his wife made brownies, so he dives headfirst into those. And, Can and, you get his address? I need some brownies. <laughs> not those kind. <laughs> um, <laughs> but anyways, I finally just had to go football, or go to old football coach on him and just go, God damn it, you're not a child. <laughs> Push away the plate, right? And just man up. Express uh, you're just yeah. Express just a little self control here. So, and I looked at him, and he almost had tears in his eyes. And I'm like, "Grow up, just grow up, <laughs> and just buckle down." And if you're pussyfooting around, right? Just yeah. dude, you're making excuses, and you haven't even had you haven't even had a child yet, and. Your life's ahead of you. Right. Just stop pissing around and start doing the right things. Yep. And that's my hardest part. That's the hardest part for me. Oh, yeah. Is. I feel like you're being a dick to somebody, but. And it's, it goes back to like that when you said, are you starving during the day? Can you, are you miserable? Can you, for him, skipping wing night, maybe that's what it takes. Right. Dude, I, yeah, I'm out. I can't go. Right. Just abstain. Just remove yourself from that environment. It's like being an alcoholic. It is. Or it you're is. Go to you know a bar yeah. or an environment where there's alcohol around. Just like with if I'm a carboholic, you know. Right. I don't want to have beer in the house. I don't need. I shouldn't have brownies in the house either. Remove the temptation. Yeah, right. it does take some discipline. It does take some willpower. I I I still want an Oreo. Right. I mean those cravings like we were talking about take how many weeks months to go away. Yeah. Before I before I can walk by a Snickers and not want to mow it down, I mean it might take a year. And part of the argument with him was, yeah, but where's the fun in that? And I uh, said, well, where's the fun in what? Well, I don't want to skip wing night. And I said, dude, you just don't get it. Yeah, you just don't get it's it. Not there you yet. don't have to do it forever, right? Fix your shit, get it back on track. Then you get to reintroduce some of that stuff once in a while. You can and try. Then you, yeah, and yeah, then you don't try. let it get sideways. If you're going to yo-yo up and down and wait, wouldn't you rather do it around your optimal weight instead of up, up at here at 300? Right, window? right. You know, like if I'm going to yo-yo around 160, that's better than yo-yoing yo around yeah, 300. Yeah, you, you know, guess what, dude? You had your fun. You sold your oats. Yep. And now it's coming home to roost. More you like got it. We're like ate his oats. Right, but now, but now the guess what? The chicken wings have come home to roost. <laughs> right, and now it's time to now you got to pay. Yeah. You had your fun. Now you got to pay. Yeah. Everybody's got to pay. Yeah. Pay and the I, man. I made it to about forty. Right, where I could literally eat anything I wanted, and it was one fifty. Right, you know, super lean. I should have done a dex scan then. I would have been just super lean. You know, I didn't have any muscles, but I was. At no body fat. And That's not a trade off, though. No, exactly. But I'm just saying, you know, then my metabolism and age kicked in and said, all right, fuck you. Started gaining 10, 15 pounds a year. And then here we are. So we, I finally had to man up, like you said, and just confront the fact that I wasn't going. And I tried, I told them in the first episode, I tried the treadmill for like a solid six months to outrun the diet. I finally came to the hard realization after reading Good Calories, Bad Calories by Gary Taubes. Mm -hmm. I but, had to change the diet. And I don't want to say that what I told this young man to man up, yeah. that that's the answer for everyone because it's not. Right. Because a lot of times there are things going on that are emotional. Then there are underlying issues 
that isn't just willpower. Right. So don't get me wrong. I'm not painting everybody into that corner because it's not fair and it's not true. Mm -hmm. But for this young man, he needed me to kick over some garbage cans in the locker room and say, try harder to the next half. Throw the folding chair into the middle of the court. Right, right. Yeah, go Bobby Knight on his ass. <laughs> and some people respond to that drill sergeant bit. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, that's part of being a good coach is, you know, what's going to work on the group that I got Everybody, in front of me. Every, every person that calls me and says, I need your help is as unique as their fingerprint. Exactly. There's no one size fits all. Right. All right, guys. Well, that's the uh, carnivore diet. That's uh, our weekly segment of How Fat is Josh? Pretty fat. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I feel better. So um, send us uh, emails, info at fitandfurious.com. Have we got comments. one yet? I'm not, not emails, but we're getting YouTube comments and things, people suggesting uh, things. So we're definitely going oh, to okay. incorporate some of those. Uh, but hit us up. You know, what do you guys want to hear about? Uh, we did carnivore. You know, we'll do stuff on keto. We'll do stuff. We'll do on, vegan. We'll do vegans. We'll, yep. so we'll talk about it all. We're not afraid. Um, check us out on YouTube. Um, see all the shenanigans go down and valuable visuals. And uh, I'm going to put weekly extra content up there too that you might get on the audio podcast. If you like the audio podcast, make sure you're checking us out on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, anywhere podcasts are found. Please subscribe, review, and share. Or that really helps us out. Also, if you want to support the show, go to FuriousMerch.com. we got all kinds of wacky T-shirts up there for meat and keto-centered people. You said and wacky. If wacky. That's not, if that's not Radio Guy 101. <laughs> I know, I mean, but they are kind of wacky. Remember, one is like Kiss, but it's cows with, with Oh, yeah, makeup, that's a cool one. You know, yeah. so, and somebody did buy one of our No Soy Boy no way. shirts last week. Fantastic. So. That's great. So check out FuriousMerch.com for that, and we will... See you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. Go eat some meat, bitches. <laughs> <laughs>